Trust Once Lost, Chapter 42, Part 2 Look, you can't blame yourself for what Spoiled did, Applejack said. What she did was wrong, but I could have prevented this. I can blame myself for creating the situation, I said. I was the one that made the decision. Spoiled just reacted. That's no different than her saying stuff to you that made you angry, Applejack countered. I know the difference between being in control and not. Green, what are you talking about? Applejack asked. I know what I'm doing, I explained. I know how I'm supposed to react. I, I know the consequences of my decisions. And Spoiled didn't? No, I said. She didn't. She just reacted. She was unable to control her emotions and lashed out at me. I could have stopped it at any time, but I didn't. Because I wanted her to overreact. It ain't your fault, Applejack insisted. And I'm gonna keep telling you that until you believe me. I stared at the ceiling. <sighs> Fine, it's not my fault. Okay, Applejack said. I won't argue with you anymore. Thanks. I couldn't help but sigh as Nurse Tenderheart entered the room, a small paper cup filled with pills in her hoof. I brought you some painkillers, Green, she said, holding out the cup. Sorry I doubted you about the magic surge. I hesitated, memories of my last round of painkillers flooding back to me. They had made me delirious, and I wasn't sure if I wanted to go through that again. What are they specifically? I asked, trying to hide my uncertainty. They're a combination of acetaminophen and codeine, Nurse Tenderheart explained. I considered asking to just take acetaminophen on its own, but the pain in my head and the constant throbbing in my leg were too aggravating. Uh, fine. I grumbled, taking the cup and popping the pills into my mouth. But if I become delirious again, I'm blaming you. Nurse Tenderheart chuckled and gave me a reassuring smile. Don't worry, Green. I'll be keeping an eye on you. And Applejack is here, too. I nodded, already imagining I could feel the effects of the painkillers. Thanks. I mumbled, my eyes starting to droop. I just want to sleep. Of course, dear. She replied, tucking me in and turning off the light completely. Get some rest. I closed my eyes and let the painkillers take me under, grateful for the relief they brought. As I settled back against my pillows, I couldn't help but feel a sense of dread. I knew I had to confront reality eventually, but I wasn't ready to deal with it yet. For now, I just wanted to escape into the oblivion of sleep, even if it was just for a little while. Every Cutie Mark Crusader was in my room. This was a disaster waiting to happen. I needed something to keep them occupied. They should have their Cutie Marks by now, but they didn't. Because of me. All of a sudden, I felt a sense of calm wash over me. The CMC shared similar expressions as they began to sing in three-part harmony. I was worried that the other patients would be bothered by how loud they were singing, but it seemed like they were all dancing along. Strange. Scootaloo sang her solo part next. The song seemed so familiar, but I... I couldn't place it. The CMC sang in harmony again. As they kept on singing, I felt the magic take hold of me, and I knew it was my time to sing. The CMC kept up the back vocals for me, but I kept on singing. And then suddenly, Diamond Tiara entered the room, exactly on cue to sing her part. And then I had the reply. After quite a few verses, Diamond Tiara lifted my chin with her hoof. Then she booped my nose and I rubbed it. Nurses from the unit wheeled my bed into the unit floor where they were all performing a choreographed dance. I could swear the unit wasn't this big before, and that it didn't have a rotating platform in the middle of it. Red Heart sang and Melody sang. Dr. Red Cross sang too, and he had a great tenor voice. The nurses sang, accompanied by the squeaking of pens as they wrote their names on the whiteboards. And then Paperstack burst through the doors to sing her line. Afterwards, the nurses were singing again. I kept singing, Dayglo kept singing, and the whole hospital staff sang in unison. I turned to see Princess Luna, in her filly form, sitting next to me on the bed, bobbing her head and clearly enjoying herself. Oh. I realized what should have been apparent a while ago. I'm dreaming, aren't I? Tis a good dream. Luna beamed. 
We are glad to see thou art in high spirits, considering the circumstances. I sighed. Worry not, young Green, Luna said. We have not come to add to your worries. We are here to wish thee pleasant dreams. You have earned them. The song ended with everyone singing. And when you wake up, remember, it's your story. How long have you been listening? I asked. We were here from the beginning, Luna replied. Dreams are a place where a pony makes sense of their confusing feelings. We merely gave this dream a push in the right direction. Your subconscious weaved together this catchy tune from the unsorted depths of your memories. Oh, you know then? I asked. About who I used to be. We have known what you once were for some time, Luna admitted. But we felt you were not ready to face that truth. Worry not, it changes nothing between us. But I, I lied! I insisted. I lied to every pony! You've said what you believed you needed to say in order to be safe. Luna said. You had no ill intent. You know the reasons why what you did was wrong. So there's no need to lecture thee. Now is the time to grow into yourself and discover who you really are. That's what matters. But it's hard though. I complained. Many things in life are hard, Luna said. But that doesn't mean that they aren't worth doing. Then what should I do? How can I fix this? I pleaded. Luna looked around the room at my friends. They were dream representations, but still. She leaned forward and nuzzled me under the chin. It will be alright, she said softly. It might take a while, but in due time you will find your peace. You have friends now. Ponies you can trust. I nodded against her muzzle. In time, I would get there. Somehow. Dr. Red Cross sat in front of his typewriter. Each of his hooves grasped an appropriately sized metal plate that could be moved in six different directions. The combination of the position of each plate printed a character. It was more mechanically complicated than the old binary typewriters but it allowed for much faster typing, without the need of a crystal to convert several taps into one character. Dear Dr. Mirror Image, I am writing to refer Green, a patient of mine, to your care for psychological evaluation and treatment. Green is an eight-year-old unicorn filly recently admitted to the hospital following an altercation that resulted in the re-injury of a broken leg. Green is highly anxious and prone to panic attacks. However, during the course of her treatment, I have come to believe that there may be more to her case than meets the eye. Despite her age, she has a practical understanding of medicine and displayed a mature understanding of her own treatment and care. Green has had a bad experience with a therapist recently, so she may be reluctant to seek help. Which is why I believe that it is important for her to work with some pony who won't jump to conclusions. It's vital for Green to receive support and guidance in processing the events that led to her injury and managing underlying emotional issues. I have the highest confidence in your ability to provide Green with the care and support she needs. Your extensive experience and compassionate approach makes you the perfect fit for Green's unique needs. I look forward to discussing Green's case further with you and would be happy to provide any additional information or support as needed. Sincerely, Dr. Red Cross, MD. I wish I could remember the songs or figure out what they sounded like, but I'll be honest, I don't think I could do it justice. But anyway, let's get on to our talented donators. Top donators, Jesse Smith, Saw630, Badass Waffle, Only One Thing, Saru Orion, and Calidus. Matchbrick, Jock, Lucio, Darkseid, Raiden, Runescythe, Will, Twinkie, Luigi, Chance of Crust, Big Smoke, Murder Princess, Little Mighty, Solar Symphony, and many more awesome people. Thank you all so much for watching this video and live life to the fullest.